Well, we're in our second week of the series, Wisdom in a Time of Uncertainty. Now, we need wisdom now more than ever. Now, today we're going to talk about decision making. I'm going to talk about how to make a foolish decision. And Pafoa is going to talk about how to make a wise decision. So now we've all made some foolish decisions in our lives. So here are just a few of my highlights from back in the day. Well, in high school, I went to a dance with the homecoming queen because she was popular and I heard she liked me. Well, she spent the entire night with her popular friends and I hung out with my friends as a really awkward third wheel. Well, in college, I snorted a noodle. Yes, that is correct. That is the same noodle going in my nose as out my mouth. Made for a great picture, but man, did that hurt coming out. <laughs> also in college, I thought this was a good look. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> but also in college, I was dating this cutie, so at least not all my decisions were foolish. See, let's face it, we've all made some foolish decisions. Okay? There are but these ones, these ones were pretty mild. But what about the ones that aren't so mild? What about the ones that are more than just bad dates, noodles, or questionable fashion choices? God wants to help you avoid really bad decisions. The ones that leave you with scars, debts, or broken relationships. See, that's why Scripture paints such a clear contrast between the wise and the foolish person. So over the next few minutes, I want, I want to paint that picture for you to give you a sense of what foolish decision-making looks like according to Scripture. And I want you, I want to invite you to have the courage to see some of these in yourself. So first, you think you're right all the time. Listen to Proverbs 12, 15. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. You see, if this is you, you lack the humility to ask for advice. This is a dead giveaway of foolishness. You think you're right. But the problem is, it's your pride your arrogance, your ignorance, your privilege, your power. All of that is foolishness. So that's number one. Number two, you take advice from other foolish people. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. You know, I am amazed how often someone goes to another foolish person for advice. You're there going, man, you know, my marriage is really struggling. I'll go talk to my cousin whose marriage is a wreck. Hmm, I wonder if I drink too much. I'll go ask my drinking buddies. See, that just doesn't make sense. Seek counsel from wise people who are more spiritually mature than you, more emotionally healthy than you, and have stronger, healthier relationships than you. Those are the people you seek out for advice. And when you don't, you're being a fool. Number three, you are more interested in talking than listening. Let me say that again in case you didn't hear it. You are more interested in talking than listening. Here's what Proverbs 18.2 says. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in in airing their own opinions. If there's ever been a proverb that describes social media comment sections, it's this one. Especially when it comes to topical stuff. It is full of people more interested in sharing their own opinions than listening or understanding to someone else's. And the truth is, maybe that's you. Come on, I'm Facebook friends with a lot of you. It is some of you. Also, this is probably one of the biggest obstacles for white Christians to understand and embrace racial and social justice. Because the truth is, too many white Christians are reacting defensively 
to everything that's going on right now, rather than trying to simply understand the black experience in this country. So if you're more interested in talking than listening, you're being foolish and you will make foolish decisions. Okay, how about number four? Number four is you get into arguments often. You get into arguments often. Listen to Proverbs 20, verse 3. It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. That is absolutely true. Every fool is quick to quarrel. How often do you get into arguments or debates, in person or online? Do you like trolling people on Facebook just for fun? Okay, let's be honest. Some of you are quick to quarrel. You have a short temper and you get in fights with your parents, your spouse, people that you don't like. You need a little less foolishness and more wisdom in your life. Okay, number five, you act impulsively. Listen to Proverbs 21.20. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. I love that imagery. When you have a decision to make, do you choose the one that sounds good right now? The one with the short-term benefit? Do you gulp down your decision-making? Do you want the best stuff right now so you make decisions that are foolish? That's what happens. That's what happens when you gulp down your food and you gulp down ideas and you, and you grab the, the fastest, quickest pleasure that will lead to foolish decisions. Well, last one, number six. Number six, you get angry easily. Proverbs 14, 29 says it like this. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but the one who is quick-tempered displays folly. This is a guarantee that you'll make foolish decisions. In the heat of anger, you'll do, say, or post something foolish. And you will hurt relationships, you will hurt yourself, and you will hurt your witness for Christ. So there you have it. How to make a foolish decision. Those six things are how you wreck a relationship. Those six things are how you get deep emotional and relational scars. Those Any of those six things are how you rack up credit card debt, all of that, that's how you become a fool. Here's the truth, church. We all do all of these at one time or another. It's easy for us. Foolishness is our default mode. That's what a sin nature means. We are fools by nature. That's why it is so important to look to God for wisdom. Because remember, God gives wisdom, but foolishness comes naturally. So let's pass it over to Papua to, and she'll talk about how to avoid all of this foolishness and instead make wise decisions.